Hello everyone. A warm welcome to you from SGT University. I am Akoiza Mamta Devi, Faculty of Nursing. Today we will be discussing about maternal pelvis. The pelvis is a basal shaped structure that supports the spinal column and protects the abdominal organs. To allow movement of the body, help in walking, running, sitting, and kneeling. It is adapted for side wearing in that, in comparison to the male pelvis, the brim is rounder and wider. It contains and protects the reproductive organs as well as the bladder and rectum. While sitting, the weight of the body is taken on by ischial tuberosities. Pelvis helps in transmitting weight of the body to the legs. Female pelvis is gynecoid shape. It has four bones, four joints, and also it divided into different parts that is inlet, cavity, and outlet. Let's discuss them in details. They're having four bones, two innominate bone, one sacrum, and one coccyx. Two innominate bone consists of ilium, isium, and pubis. First one is ilium. It is the large flared out part. It concave inner surface is the iliac fossa. The curved upper border is the iliac crust. When you place your hand on your hips, it rests on the iliac crust. At front of the iliac crust, there is a bony prominence known as the anterior superior iliac spine and below it is the anterior inferior iliac spine. At the other end of the iliac crust are two similar points called the posterior superior and posterior inferior iliac spines. It forms part of the acetabulum above the thick lower part is the ischial tuberosity. When you are sitting down, you are sitting on your two ischial tuberosities. This can be palpated through the buttock and placing a close fist between them can assess the distance apart. The slight projection behind and just above the ischial tuberosity is called the ischial spine. The ischial spine can be palpated vaginally and in labor, the station of the fetal head is estimated in relation to them. The innominate bone contains a deep to receive of the head of the femur is called acetabulum. On the lower border of the innominate bone are formed two curves. One extends from the posterior inferior iliac spine up to the ischial spine called getter sciatic nodes. It is wide and rounded. The other lies within the ischial spine and ischial tuberosity is called lesser sciatic nodes. The vaginal valve is located nearly. The ring pressure should be applied above this level for treatment of polyps. Internal rotation of head occurs when head reaches at this level. Forceps are applied only when head is at this level. We can apply mid forceps or below it can apply outlet forceps. Pudendal nerve block is carried out at this level. The elevator any muscles are situated at this level. Head is considered engaged when valve is felt vaginally at or below this level. It is a small bone that has a body and two projections called the superior ramus and inferior ramus. The two pubic bones meet at the symphysis pubis. The two inferior rami form the apex of the pubic arc 
merging into a similar ramus on the ischium. This forms the anterior border of the obturator foramen and the subpubic arc. In the normal gynecoid pelvis, the subpubic arc should be at least 90 degrees. The sacrum is the waist safe bone consisting of the five fused vertebra, the first of which has a prominent upper border known as the sacral promontory. It projects forward, decreasing the anterior posterior diameter of the pelvic brim. If this diameter is seriously decreased, it can impair the descent of the fetal head into the pelvis. The smooth concave anterior surface is referred to as the hollow of the sacrum and the areas either side are the ala or wings. The convex posterior surface is rough to receive attachment of muscles. The sacrum is perforated by four set of holes or foramen through which the sacral nerve passes that we call coda of equina. It is at the lower part of the spine and is a vestigial tail. It is a smaller triangular shaped bone consists of four fused vertebrae. The coccyx gives attachment to ligament, deep muscle of the pelvic floor and to muscle fiber of the anal sphincter. During labor, the coccyx move forward backward to enlarge the pelvic outlet, following more space for the pelvic basis of the fetus. It's divided into two divisions, false pelvis and true pelvis. False pelvis, that is greater or pelvis major. It is the part of the pelvis situated above the brim. It is formed by the upper flare-out portion of the iliac bone and protects the abdominal organ. It supports the intestines and transmits part of their weight to the anterior wall of the abdomen. It is of no obstetrical significance. The bony canal through which the fetus must pass during birth. It is situated below and behind the pelvic brim. Its bony walls are more complete than those of the greater pelvis. It is bounded at the back of the sacrum, at the side of the isium, and in the front of the pelvis, forming a solid ring of bone. There are two sacroiliac joints, one sacrococcygeal joint, one symphysis pubic joint, one lumbosacral joint. Sacroiliac joint. Sacrum to the ilium, it is the strongest joint. Sacrococcygeal joint form between sacrum and coccyx, forming where base of coccyx articulate with tip of sacrum. Symphysis pubis form at junction of two pubic bones united by a pad of cartilage. Lambrosacral joint, it is joined between the fifth lumbar vertebral body and the body of the first sacral segment. There are five ligaments that is First one, sacroiliac ligament, sacrospinous ligament, sacrotuberous ligament, symphysis pubis ligament, and sacrococcygeal ligament. First one is sacroiliac ligament. This ligament passes in front of and behind each sacroiliac joint. Sacrospinous ligament, it is the ligament that connects the seal spine to the lateral surface of the sacrum and the coccyx. Third, Sacrotuberous ligament. It is the ligament that connects the cell tuberosity to the lateral surface of the sacrum and coccyx. Fourth, symphysis pubis ligament. Ligaments are used to bridge space in the wall of the pelvis. Fifth, that is sacrococcygeal ligament. It is the ligament that connects sacrum to the coccyx.
there are certain points as landmark on the pelvic brim sacrum is at the back of the brim iliac bones are at the sides and the pubic bones are at the front there are nine landmarks in the pelvis first one sacral promontory second ala or wing of the sacrum third sacroiliac joint fourth iliopectinian line fifth iliopectinian eminence sixth pectinian line seven superior ramus of the pubic bone eight upper inner border of the pubic bone nine upper inner border of the symphysis pubis Pelvic brim is the inlet of the pelvis which they have divided the pelvic cavity into folds and true pelvis. It is formed by the sacral promontory, ala of the sacrum, arcuate line of the ilium, iliopubic eminence, pectinal line of the pubis, pubic crust and symphysis pubis. The brim is oval in shape, anterior posterior diameters. True conjugate is 11.5 cm, transfer diameters is 13.5 cm. Diameters of the brims is divided into three that is anterior posterior diameter, oblique diameter and transfer diameter. Anterior posterior diameter divided obstetrical conjugate, true or anatomical conjugate or diagonal conjugate. First one is obstetrical conjugate. This diameter extends from the sacral promontory to the upper inner border of the symphysis pubis and measures approximately 11 cm. True or anatomical conjugate. It is the most important of the pelvis measurement as it is the first bony straight through which the fetus has to pass. It is measured from the promontory of the sacrum to the center of the upper surface of the symphysis pubis 12 cm. Next is diagonal conjugate. It is measured anterior posteriorly from the apex of the pubic arc of the symphysis pubis to the sacral promontory 1.25 cm more than the obstetric conjugate and may be felt during a vaginal examination as part of a pelvic assessment. Oblique diameter, left and right oblique diameter. It is measured from one sacroiliac joint to the iliopectinian eminence on the opposite side of the pelvis 12 cm. Transfer diameter. It is between the widest point of the iliopectinian line 13 cm. Next, that is sacrocotyloid diameter. It is measured from the sacral promontory to the iliopectinian eminence on one side 9 cm. Next is the pelvic cavity. The pelvic canal is curved. The posterior wall is longer than the anterior. The most roomy zone with almost in round shape. Anterior posterior diameter 12 cm, oblique diameter 12 cm, transfer diameter 12 cm. This is all about pelvic cavity. Next, that is the, the pelvic outlet. The lower border of the symphysis pubis is the tuberosity and tip of the coccyx. It is diamond shape. The subpubic arc has an angle of 85 degree. The outlets are described anatomical outlet and obstetrical outlet. Anatomical outlet. It is formed by the lower border of ease of the bone together with the sacrotuberous ligament. Obstetrical outlet, it is of greater practical significance because it includes the, the narrow strait through which the fetus must pass. The narrow pelvic strait lies between the sacrococcygeal joint, two isial spine and lower border of the symphysis pubis. The obstetrical outlet is the space between the narrow pelvic strait and the anatomical outlet. The anterior posterior diameter, this is a line from the lower border of the symphysis pubis to the sacrococcygeal joint, it measures 13 cm. The oblique diameter, this is said to be between the obturator foramen and sacrospinous ligament, although there are no fixed point that is 12 cm. The transfer diameter, this is a line 
between the two isial spine 11 cm. It is narrowest diameter in the pelvis. The pain of least pelvis dimension is to be at the level of the isial spine. So today we have learned about maternal pelvis. Next time we meet, we will be learning about fetal circulation. Till then, keep learning, keep growing. See you next time.